And just remember, everything we say here, this is unedited. This is raw. So, like, if the dog jumps up and, like, you know, mauls you, I'm going to keep it in there. I see. You know, Shoot. make a great TikTok. Anyway, I'll cue us in in five, four. Hey, before you do that, since it's a thunderstorm, I'm just going to close the door on my dog, okay? Because okay. she gets freaked out. See, she doesn't realize it's recording, right? So, like, preparedness, folks, preparedness. So, anyway, <laughs> are you ready? I'm ready. I'm not editing any of that shit out. Just letting you know. We didn't do this in yet. <laughs> I started to count. So, you know, my show, my rules. <laughs> oh, no. Bring it. <laughs> in five. Four. Hey everybody, Eric here for Biz Talk, the show, um, and another virtual interview, which we're not going to try to make this too much of a habit. Um, we like the live stuff, but we're too broke to fly to Florida to visit Kanani. Um, so this is Kanani Vogelai. Did I say that right? You did. You I it. did. I prefer to say Volagelli and make it like sound all Italian, but you know, it's I know that. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Kanani, for those of you who know Kanani, uh, you've heard me speak about uh, Kanani, uh, who I have nicknamed Wonder Woman because um, she's either a superhero or a cyborg driven by AI. I'm not sure which. <laughs> um, she is our digital marketing director at Black Ink and the um, my like partner in crime when it comes to our email marketing strategies. I mean, um, you know, as an entrepreneur, it's always good to have people you can vibe with, which is really cool. Um, and, uh, you know, Kanani is unfortunately stuck with us. Um, so, right. you know, fun times. Um, but she's more, she does more than uh, work with us. Um, she has an amazing background uh, in, in the not-for-profit sector. Mm -hmm. um as well and has recently launched with her husband nick and her business partner Maria, um a new company called outcome engine so even though she's on the hustle doing one thing she's got another iron in the fire just like all us entrepreneurs so kanani tell us a little bit about you okay yeah um so i started my career 2002 um, working for a nonprofit that was education focused and, um, education has a huge place in my heart. Um, I did not graduate high school, um, and I really struggled in my education. And when I eventually went back and got my bachelor's, there was, you know, it's this huge disconnect for me. Um, and so, you know, it's got a huge place in my heart. I spent a dozen years, um, in the nonprofit industry really focused on how do we improve education at a state level. Um, when I left there, I kind of turned my attention to technology and how technology can really impact education um, and started a company, Learning Ovations, or helped to found a company, Learning Ovations, um, which was later acquired by Scholastic. Um, and then, um, kind of moved a little more kind of all the way into technology, um, starting a web development firm in 2017. Unfortunately, we did not survive COVID. Um, and so started working with Eric and um, today, I not today, but recently we started our newest venture, um, Outcome Engine, which is software development company and overall small business growth development services. So. Um, really everything from um, revenue operations, your digital marketing strategy, up through recruiting, leadership development, and of course, software and mobile app development. So really kind of, you know, looking at where a business is today, where you want to be, and then what are the right tools that you need to get you there, not just in terms of like, you know, us trying to sell you the greatest and best, but taking a way more of a user focused, you know, okay, what is it that your users need? What are they, you know, how much do they have to spend? How much are they willing to spend? And then finding that alignment between your budget, 
what your users need and what your business goals are, and then helping you build out whatever that is to really help businesses be successful. Yeah. So, and I mean, it's, there's, there's an alignment there with uh, education because you're teaching, you know, now I have a little bit of a, uh, you know, insight into your brand. So um, I could say this, you know, knowing full well that you're teaching small businesses, small business owners, one, how to let go, right? How to switch from the, I wear the, all the hats to, uh -huh. Uh -huh. to being a CEO. Mm -hmm. um, you're teaching them that and you're teaching them um, how to not fear technology yes. and spend their money wisely. I yes. mean, I know one of the things we spoke about when we were talking about your brand was, you know, that the client, it, it's not the dollar, it's the client, right? It's, it's absolutely obviously you got to make money as a business but you're not you're not driven by oh this client's budget is x so we're only going to give him two-thirds of our service oh yeah no way no way we had a client come to us recently and he said here's this idea i want for a mobile app can we you know bid this out and um you know we took a look and we're like you know honestly like you know, mobile apps can be very expensive and here's this huge price tag we could give you, but really what you need is market research and to really look at, you know, are people going to use, you know, this is a great idea, are people actually going to use it? What is the needs that we're fulfilling? How do we ensure that there's alignment between the tool you want and the users and market you want to reach, you know? And so it was a much smaller scope of work that was like, hey, let's actually figure out what to build before we just take your idea and build it <laughs> regardless of whether or not it actually is going to get used yeah my my pet peeve is building something that nobody uses you know I, I, and they're out there i mean just going to everywhere. google play and oh yeah everywhere you know i mean it's a small business that just sunk thousands of dollars into a tool that nobody then goes on to use it it's terrible you know that can have a real impact on their long-term goals and you know where they're at and so that yeah. it's very important to me to Let's do the research first. Yeah. And and I mean, I think that's, uh, I guess, you know, there's something about like, because I myself, I dropped out of high school, you know, and had to go re-up into the educational system. Mm -hmm. And I, I think, you know, it's funny because I share that same love for the, the, the educating, like teaching, you know. Um, for sure. So I think there's definitely something in that that particular mindset that you have about making sure that the customer, the client, is, is clearly knowledgeable enough to understand, you know, that that they could be making a mistake, right? So yeah. I, I think that comes into play. And and I mean, I know in your not profit for your not profit period, right? You 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 really brought that not profit from a very small revenue stream up. Oh, yeah. So you want to just jump on maybe like a how? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, you know, so we started out. Um, I think we were at about. 300,000 in annual revenue, um, well, all the way up to, we were at 8 million annually when I left. Um, and, you know, one of the biggest parts of that was really focusing on um, talking to our customers, talking to the, you know, people that we were serving, understanding what their needs were, and then building tools and technology that could bridge that gap. Um, and, you know, really having it be this user focused, user centric, experience um you know and, and there were several tools sorry tornado warning let's be careful <laughs> oh, we have a pretty bad thunderstorm going on outside um but yeah really building the tools that um you know it was based on the user not based on like here's this awesome idea i have i'm just going to go build it and see who wants it or cares about it yeah that was pretty much all the 80s yeah, right. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> Let's just most, make it. Most startups, if you're being honest, you know, like there's been this whole idea of like, you know, I even got this question the other day. It's like, well, what comes first, the the mission, you know, the the service or, you know, the money, you know, like how do how do you start something? And it's like, well, you start with the problem that your customers may have, you understand the problem. You get data, like actual quantifiable data to understand, you know, what the problem is, what, you know, okay, so I might know sitting here that, you know, I've got some concern, but it might be six months before I actually go out and look for a solution for that. And in the meantime, you know, maybe I'm 
Googling it. Maybe I'm talking to friends and family. Maybe I'm on chat GPT asking it questions, you know, but, you know, as a business owner, I want to know, okay, when, from that moment that I'm sitting on my couch, I'm like, boy, this really bothers me to when I'm like company XYZ, here's my money. What is every step that I took along the way? And how do I, as a company, position myself there with the answers you're looking for to help, you know, helpfully provide value. And, you know, hopefully you choose mm -hmm. me if I can provide you the quality experience that you're looking for. So that's really my business philosophy. And what I try to bring to all my clients is this, you know, let's be relevant and helpful and useful to our customers and build something that's in line with what they really need and are looking for. Yeah, I think that's, I think there's a degree of like, there's some inspiration in that is, it, it, I find it, I'm pretty sure other business owners would find it too, is that you're in essence, it's a real lookout because, because you're looking out for their dollars, you're looking out, and, and let's face it, you are looking out for yourself because the last thing you want to do is go back and have to fix a bunch of problems that were avoidable. Absolutely. Right? You Absolutely. Wanna, you know. Yeah. Or the crap review that like these people just like took my money and left me out you know, high and dry. Like I see it all the time in tech yeah. and it, like, it's, it drives me nuts, you know? So. No, I get it. I get yeah. it. You know, and I think one of the things is, is a lot of small businesses, the, one of the mistakes they make, and I'm guilty as hell of it too. You know what I mean? It's like, I have an idea. I'm going to do it. How many times have I said to you, we're doing this, Kanani? <gasps> I mean, like a nut. I don't know, like 900. Yeah, right. And then, you know, you got you, you talk me down off the ledge. Some things I'm not going to lie. Some things like, oh, this is great. Let's run with it. But mm -hmm. most of the times you're like, oh, Eric, let's not do that first. And then, you know, I'll do something stupid. Like, I, I'm like, oh, sorry, I sent the email already. <laughs> it's only happened like one time. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I think I think a lot of businesses don't. They, they have an idea and they want to run with it without any analysis, whether mm -hmm. it's an, an application and, and it could be a not-for-profit like, because there's people that have great vision and great desire to help the world. Right. Mm -hmm. And then they go out there and they want to be a not-for-profit and suddenly they don't, they realize like, Oh man, I have to do my books this way. I better leave the country <laughs> at this point. <laughs> yeah. We're not trying to do that. <laughs> so I think there's a bit of inspiration that your business model is, is really it's, um, it's a real business model that that I think I don't know if everybody's adopting it, but I mean I'm I'm falling around in like-minded circles like you, so it's hard for me to almost see now if there's anybody not in this sort of model of client first, like genuinely client first. Yeah, yeah. You know, because there's a big difference. Yeah, you know there really is, and you know, and another big part of it is just like really, you know, kind of taking that holistic view, you know. It, historically businesses you know they kind of just do one thing you know okay well we build software you know and so we're not going to include in that you know quality assurance and we're not going to include in that um you know customer research or product development tools you know it's like they have an expectation that you're going to come to them with like here's the specs and it's already been researched for the customers it's already been you know and then you're going to take the software and then you're going to do all your quality assurance and testing and you know implementation and and it's you know just this very you know we're going to do this one little slice and you know if you don't know everything that should have come before that and everything that needs to come after that you know you just wasted a lot of money on this one little piece that you got instead of this holistic, you know, picture of, Hey, here's how to implement this tool in the greater context of your business goals, your team, your customers goals, and, you know, the actual available resources, including time and money, um, and training and, you know, all of that. Um, so for me, it's like, let's take this like broad holistic view, of how to actually help businesses to grow and thrive. So how do you, how do you translate that into the question that let's say a small business should be asking, uh, you know, like we know, obviously we know what your vision is, but I mean, not all small businesses know what the hell to ask. A lot of times, you know, a given business owner is going to know, you know, kind of what is the, um, you know, the problem, like, what are they struggling with? 
um, and, you know, suffering from, and maybe that's, you know, the age old cash is king and there's just not enough of it. Um, maybe it's, you know, they're bogged down by technical debt and they don't know how to get out from under that. Um, you know, there's a bazillion problems that, um, any business can start, you know, can struggle with and, and kind of those founders and business owners and managers know that, you know, and even on down to your frontline people, they'll have this kind of intuitive gut feeling around like something's wrong, but you know, it, the most important thing is to start to, you know, to step back and analyze, okay, where are we at? What data do we have? Um, and, and to really, you know, for me, it's like, let's, let's gather all of the data, let's get everything into one place, and then let's start to look at it, you know, okay, where do we have business silos? Where do we have, you know, a lot of these, you know, do we have a way for our customers to talk to us about their experience? Are we following their experience? Um, you know, if the concern is, you know, maybe a drop in revenue, let's look at, okay, what is your sales and marketing look like? You know, does your, you know, are the leads that your marketing is handing off to your sales team quality? If not, let's work on that. You know, are these quality leads, but they're not getting closed with the sales team? Let's figure that out. Um, do we have a ton of people who are not leaving good reviews? Maybe our customer success team isn't, on point with that, you know, or maybe there's issues with the, you know, the product. And so, you know, for me, let's just gather data, let's do an analysis, and then let's start to implement those good data practices. Okay, once a month, these are the metrics we're going to look at and determine, okay, based on this data, what are the actionable steps we should make? So instead of just this gut reaction, it's okay, we can see, you know, we're expecting a 3% conversion rate and we got a 1%. What's wrong? You know, what's going on there? So, it, you know, to me, analysis, data, and then we take the actions and start to move forward from there. So, yeah, let's, um, let's reel that back because, you know, we tend to, as professionals, end up using our jargon. Right. APIs, key data points, yeah, you know, you know <laughs> and we're, we're guilty as hell it. <laughs> yeah, right. And then if you look at like even in government contracting, like, you know, everybody said RFP, IFTB, right? So there's all this stuff. So we tend to to jump into our jargon and we, we fail do. to realize that um, some small business owners don't listen the, the pizza, the part, you know, the pizzeria owner, he has his jargon, right? Mm -hmm. We don't follow mm -hmm. it, right. you know? So um, let's reel back real quick. Like when you say look at data, they should be asking questions about their data, you know? So data can encompass a lot of stuff, right? Yeah, so, absolutely. you know, is it, and you mentioned in that same sentence, you know, the same description, you mentioned, you know, customer reviews, our customer reviews data. Is that what data is? Is that one of the key data, right? It so tell us, how, just again, I don't expect you to go down the list, but just to sort of put it in plain speak for a few people, what sure. is data for a small business? Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, a lot of people, you can kind of think of it initially as, you know, just the standard stuff that you would have. So, you know, you can go into QuickBooks and you can look at, you know, money in, money out. That's like a pretty standard, you know, you better be doing that if you're running your business. Um, you know, and then you can kind of step back from there a little bit and say, you know, and then we look at sales data. Um, and again, you know, you, you should probably know, in general, you know, what does it cost to acquire a new customer? You know, what is the value, you know, lifetime value of your customer? Um, so there's a lot of these different reports that are pretty standard. Um, and then you can kind of back that back a little bit and start looking at your analytics. So how many people are coming to your website? Um, you know, how many people are coming to, um, you know, liking your posts, how many people are, you know, subscribing. Um, and so all of these different kind of touch points, you know, they're, da they're just kind of a, you know, an input. Um, but now what you want to start to do is um, start to organize all of that. And, and a really great framework that I like is the customer value journey. So, you know, if we're starting from awareness, somebody is aware that they have a problem, um, what do they do? They might Google it. They might read some blog articles. They might look at YouTube videos um, and start to try to understand, you know, what solutions are out there 
that could solve this problem I have. Um, when I say solve a problem, that might be like, you know, I need pest control because there's too many bugs around in Florida, um, <laughs> you know, or maybe it's, boy, I don't look quite as cool as my neighbor since they got this amazing new car and I better get some other amazing new car that's cooler than my neighbor's, whatever their problem is, right? Um, problem. Um, and so <laughs> First world problems. First world problems. Um, <laughs> You know, and so it's to kind of peel that back and understand, okay, what is the problem that they're dealing with? Um, when they're aware of it, what does that look like? Um, and so then the next step um, is there, you know, they might engage somehow. So maybe now they've come to my website and they've gone into my little chat box and they're like, hey, you know, can you help me understand, um, you know, how, you know, they, they engage with me. This might also be that they just like, start following my videos on YouTube or, you know, they like my Facebook page, you know, all of these different ways to engage. Wait, you have a YouTube page? Are you holding out on me? working on it. We're talking about Black Ink's YouTube page right now. <laughs> oh, oh, wait, I, I, Black Ink doesn't really have a good YouTube page because we don't care about that. Well, the Kerman Con brand is a different story. Fair, fair. But BizTalk does. Yeah, Kerman Con brand. <laughs> so we are not, anyway, I'm sorry. Go ahead. We're fine. <laughs> That shit happens. Really. You know, you don't. Some and sometimes it's about what the right channel is, and and so when you're in that awareness phase, you know, for me, like yes, having a robust YouTube channel for a software company would be great. But is that the absolute best use of my money when I'm just starting out? No, not really. Um, you know, because that has a very long um, rate of return. You know, I might start to see a new customer in a year. Um, you know, and maybe in two to three years, it's going to really start, you know, it will be this engine that really helps me find new customers, but initially not so much. Um, so it's you really mean an big. outcome engine. <laughs> yes. Outcome engine. Yes. <laughs> <That's sad. laughs> uh, you know, and so it's really trying to determine, you know, okay, what are the channels, you know, who's my ideal user, where are they going to look for information to solve their problem? And then how do I make sure? I'm in front of them and can engage with them. Um, and then what's the data, you know, what can I look at? Is it YouTube video views, you know, et cetera, um, you know, to really, to put my information out there, provide value, show that I know what I'm talking about and, you know, encourage them to engage with me. Sure. Um, so in that next step, they subscribe. Hopefully that's, you know, an email address that and that's the like you know when it comes to digital marketing that's the real gold is well it's the silver because the real gold is when they buy something from you um, but you know you're wanting those email addresses um so they subscribe and then now i can kind of take into that next step which is um you know kind of this small purchase um right you don't really want to hit them with like you kind of think of it like dating oh. So yeah, right. It's mm -hmm, absolutely mm -hmm. like dating. So you know, basically, data points or d data is just all this. It's all the input that's coming in from yes. all these sources. Like yes. that's the simplest terms we can give it to them. So if they're on social media, what is what is all those go? In other words, go out and find out what engagement means, and then understand that definition mm -hmm. so that you get that data. Yes. Um, are they doing emailing? So everything. Are they are they talking to their customers at the desk or at the at the counter? Right. That's all data. That's all input all to to help them then parse out. Now, what happens when um, somebody collects all this data but they have no clue on how to make it work for them? Like, you know, let's be real here. Not everybody's a brand person. Not everybody's a marketing person. You could have a marketing person and they suck at email. It's right? true. It's true. Yeah. Um, so what I really recommend is some technology tools that um, integrated tools that will really help you to compile all of it. Um, HubSpot is the gold standard for that um, just because they integrate your sales, marketing and customer success. Um, you know, MailChimp is another great tool, Salesforce. Um, so your customer relationship manager, CRM is usually the, the right place to start. Um, and then from there, you know, there are a ton of other like automations and integrations and, you know, and it can be very 
specific and dependent on your business. Um, you know, but a lot of times it's just having that CRM um, and those analytics. And, you know, this is a, you know, there's a eternal rabbit hole that you can go down beyond that. <laughs> um, but I would say start there. Um, and that what that really gives you is just the ability to, you know, to to keep track of your your users, you know, from when they visited your blog to when they subscribed to when they actually purchase something, and then hopefully when they go and leave a review for new customers or, um, you know, give you some sort of feedback about their experience, and maybe that's them just buying again from you. Um, you know, so, so really those, turning right. into these repeat customers. Go ahead. So, you know, let's let's like reel it back again to the small business, right? Because we know that the, that larger businesses come to a point where it's a necessity to have software. Yes. There's a point where they, they're, they're it's their supply chain or their manufacturing hub, or maybe it's clients are getting bigger. And it's just to organize it all, they're required. They have, it's a necessity at that point. Mm -hmm. um, and I think there's a lot of small businesses that don't see that as a necessity when they're small. And I personally think that's a myth to some degree, right? I mean, I, I really believe that you should jump on and, and you correct me if I'm wrong. Like small business should. Once you're big enough that you have more than one person who can keep a individualized approach with all of their customers, which is most every business, you know, in the modern age, um, some sort of tracking, you know, some sort of tool to to be able to say, okay, this is Joe who a month ago purchased XYZ. And so now I know how to communicate with him or, you know, this is Mary and she, you know, hasn't bought anything from, from us yet, but she has some questions and now I know how to engage with her in a different way. Um, so it's really being able to provide that, you know, individualized experience, both you know, maybe it's a phone call or a Zoom or whatever, um, but maybe it's just an email, maybe it's something on social, um, you know, where you don't really, you know, if you have a thousand people who are interested in engaging with you and you want to give them this personalized experience, there's no way to do that without some sort of tool to make sure that, you know, you know what their first name is, you know what their email address is, you know what their customer status is, and you know what their unsubscribe status is, is you don't want to be sending people stuff that they do not want, laws and all, um, and just your brand reputation. Um, you know, so those things are super important. And I don't know how you would do that without technology in this day and age. Yeah. So, I mean, even if you're, if you're a one person operation, you have even a hundred customers, you're, you need something to keep it all organized and it could be simple, free tools mm -hmm. to start out with. You don't have to pay, you know, ridiculous amounts of money. Um, so yeah, so, uh, I'm going to probably like be just straight up here. What's some dumb shit businesses do oh. that they shouldn't do? Oh gosh. Um, don't go just buying an email list and spamming everybody on it. Um, don't have this amazing idea to revolutionize an entire industry and spend your life savings on software without any user research. Um, <laughs> and kind of everything in between, you know, if, you know, there are best practices and there are tools and, you know, it can be, really, you know, especially when it comes to technology, it can be really intimidating to, um, you know, especially if you're small or starting out and, you know, I have a lot of clients who their business is, you know, it's not a tech business. They're selling popcorn or they're, you know, an, an education focused startup. Um, you know, people don't think like, oh, I'm a tech company. Um, but the reality is, you know, in this day and age, every company is a tech company. The minute you get a Facebook page or a website or, you know, you want to do some sort of mobile pay, you know, every business becomes a tech business. Yeah. And so, you know, and so if, you, if you're not, you know, good at tech, which is a ton of people, 
um, I really recommend finding, you know, looking to, you know, finding an expert. Like, hey, can I, well, you can, you know, provide consultation to help me X, Y, Z, you know, and that can be a really big deal just to help you to learn, you know, just like, okay, I'm not great at accounting. I'm going to find an accountant and I'm going to ask them to walk me through every step that I need to make to be sure that I'm in compliance. It's the same with technology, you know, and, and you got to have at least somebody that knows a little bit, um, you know, but there is kind of this like tough spot where it's like, okay, here's the tech that I, you know, I'm good at and I can manage. And then, you know, kind of in between there to like this big company that, you know, really need, you know, now you're creating custom software, you know, it's wise to have a CTO that is actually, you know, maybe a developer or, you know, knows how to manage developers, but that can be really expensive. Um, and so something that could be really helpful in that phase is to hire, you know, it's called a fractional CTO. Um, and this is somebody, they might work for you for two hours a week or, you know, 10 or whatever. Um, so you're not paying for a CTO for your business, but it's somebody that can come in, they mm -hmm. have that tech expertise, they can, you know, look at your whole system, provide you support, um, you know, and it's going to be at a much lower you know, cost, then here's my, you know, annual salary for the CTO. Right. Um, so there's a lot of ways that you can kind of get the support you need without spending all of that cash. Just amounts of money. Exactly. Exactly. So, all right. So we're about to wrap it and it's been a half an hour. So it goes by fast, right? Oh, right. <laughs> so um, one really quick inspirational thing you can give somebody from your journey. Boy, quick thought. you know what it's it's hard it's rough and and it's gonna be okay you know sometimes you get ran over and you just get up and you keep going and it, it can feel like ah like what am i doing um but everybody feels that way every now and then i i, I got run over yeah yeah, we've all been run over. No, I mean, I literally got run over. I got hit by the car, remember? Oh, yeah, car, which is rude. <laughs> um, but you got back up and you're yeah. out riding again. And that's the thing is, you know, it, yeah, you you just get back up and you keep going and you'll be all right. All right. So uh, on the web, where can they find Outcome Engine? OutcomeEngine.io. Okay. And uh, every way to sign up or contact you on the website there? There is indeed. Okay. And um, I guess you can also reach uh, me Kanani, at outcomeengine.io. All right. Make sure that's on the screen. So uh, I guess that's everything. So listen, folks, thank you for joining us for another episode of Biz Talk. And um, you know, just so you know, I'm not the only one like marketing Biz Talk. It's her fault too. So if you get emails like crazy, it's 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 because she's okaying it. <laughs> blame me. <laughs> yeah, blame her. Blame her. Blame her. I always need somebody to blame. All good CEOs have somebody to blame. It's um, very important. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so listen, folks, take watch this again. Watch some other episodes, but watch this one again because I think there's some really good uh, takeaways from this conversation with Kanadi. And I hope you guys go out there and make some shit happen. All right. Yeah. Deuces. You got this.